Scream Queens Season 1, Episode 13. This episode is called The Final Girl Z. And yeah, uh, this is the. Right. Spoilers for all of Season 1. Absolutely love this episode. Yeah. Um, real quick, please support the SAG After Strike. There will be some links in the description box. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this was the season one finale. The, the, yeah, excellent finale. Really, really, yeah, let's, let's dive right in. So, we get some fairly South Parky jokes at the start where, you know, Dean Munch, says, you know, it's, yeah, makes these jokes about college being really PC and, you know, not, you know, they want diversity but not conservatives and such. I don't really have anything to say to it. Let's see. And, yeah, so we get Hester's background Apparently Gigi cried for three years straight. And I really love that even as a kid, Hester was try hard. You know, and the her and Boone are talking about the best or you know Gigi is having them tested about what is the best uh, you know murder weapon and why. And yeah, we, we see that, you know, Hester never actually needed a neck brace. It was just, uh, you know, to be socially invisible. And I really love that, you know, she rips, after she rips it off, holds it up, and we get lightning strike, like, you know, sci-fi horror yeah. And yeah, we see them decide on the Red Devil costume. Right, and apparently Boone wasn't gay. That was just his idea for, like, how to, how to avoid suspicion and yeah, Hester points out that's just gonna draw more attention to this. yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, Mun Kathy Munch lets in Hester because of diversity, even though the file is clearly falsified. And and yeah, you know, she says, Yeah, it's because I was homeschooled and I think she knows like <gasps> you know, just <laughs> No wonder that it's, yeah. And apparently, legit the reason she didn't kill Zayde and Grace is because they're nice. You know, they were the only ones who were, like, welcoming to her. And and she says, you know, that's a good quality. It might save your life one day. And they're like, ah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, that really sums up slasher movies well. The, you know, if you're like, a lot of slasher movies are about punishing people who sin. So, yeah, if you're nice, you're going to survive the entire movie. And here it's legit, you know, the killer likes them. Likes that they're nice. So it doesn't kill. It's just, which I'm not, I, I'm not sure I know of a, a slasher movie where that's actually, like, text. And we see, like, right after the, you know, when the... Hester is being pulled away with the with the shoe and the please get up. Can we save the shoe? <laughs> Never changed, you know. And the, <laughs> they talk about all the reasons why number five, you know, is like you know me. I couldn't be a killer. Yeah, I know you. That's why I'm sure you're the killer. You know, and apparently she clips her toenails with her mouth. It's, okay. Why would I waste money on Tony Clippers when God gave me a perfectly good mouth? I'm very flexible, you know, just... Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and the, yeah, apparently she confesses in her sleep, and number three is like, shut up. 
and <laughs> Denise shows up and and says, you know, Boone has has been found dead, and I think he might be the killer. You know, I got a report of you know a possible gay face, which wow. Let's see, and and Grace does still believe that Hester is the killer, and you know Hester was prepared, so she brings in like fake parents, and it turns out you know they're like TV actors. It is like you couldn't have looked a little harder. Maybe don't pick someone that everyone's gonna recognize. Just yeah, and. Yeah, you know, oh, the reason that, you know, I, I didn't, there weren't a record of them is they were in the CIA. And as part of the CIA cover, they had to appear in some commercials. And, <laughs> you know, and, and they bring in Chanel Number no. 5's parents, and they corroborate everything Hester said, and like, she sucks. Our daughter is terrible. Um, we've been meaning to get rid of her for a while now, so this is this is great. Please, please, you know, just give us the script. We will recite it word for word. No problem whatsoever. And let's see. Yeah, and and you know, Hester says number three is also one of the killers. You know, and apparently her drink was spiked. I didn't have to, I didn't just have to go number two. I had to go number three. And everyone's like, oh. you know, no, no one is like, what the hell does that, number three? That's not a thing. No, everyone is just like, oh my God. And, 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 you know, the, the bathroom was absolutely disgusting in this place, which, yeah, a lot of, a lot of places have disgusting, but, you know, it's, it's like, really, it's like Desperado, the, the, Ah, crap, I forget the bar name, but I think, you know, it's a fairly memorable bit. That's how disgusting this pair, this, these bathrooms are. <clears throat> and supposedly, you know, number three has... I'm, I'm not going to be using the, the term. I know that's now considered offensive. I'm, I'm not 100% certain if it was when the movie was made. But uh, episode. Wow. The episode aired. But, but yeah. She has DID, and I love that she just believes it fully. Like, she doesn't question it at all. Like, I'm just incredibly suggestible. Like, so you're saying I'm a killer, and my altar is like dirty hell, and, you know, and number five is like, this is crazy. That conversation never took place. Number three is like, but if it did, I wouldn't remember because that was dirty hell, and it Let's see. You know, and she thought Pete was being easily conned by a Chanel. And yeah, finally Chanel number one is accused. I just I love how like again, this you know we've seen this before. Murder murder mystery stories, a lot of them end with, you know, the killer is someone in this very room, you know, and by the end it's like you would have done, you know, and sometimes there's more than one, like, accusation, although, I, no, I guess that is more, like, parody stuff, like, you know, but, but, yeah, this one actually has multiple suspects also, and we, the audience, know from the very start of it that it's the killer doing the accu the accusing. <sighs> okay, if you're gonna accuse one person after another, can we at least sit down? This is very interesting, though. And, 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 you know, Chanel, number one, is determined to not be arrested, so she screams and tries running up the stairs, and then trips in her high heels running up stairs, Just, yeah. And, and, you know, they get arrested, and three is like, oh, these guys are hot, you know, it's, you're gonna be arrested, and that's where your priorities are. Are these cops strippers? They were strippers, but then I deputized them and apparently didn't get them new uniforms. So they're like, oh, walking around bare arms, bare legs. Just, yeah. And then he still thinks they is. <laughs> I still got my eye on you. And she, like, 
sort of moonwalks away, back, backs out of the shot while the, the camera is focusing on Hester. And right, and yeah, we we do a, a time skip, and Chad and Denise break up. Well, waterfalls playing, and Denise, you know, quoting the lyrics, and Chad is just so sad, and like I, you know, really, really funny. I I always enjoy Chad. I'm really glad he showed up again. I've been really jonesing for like. I think last time we saw him was like the the uh, what's it called Thanksgiving episode, you know. And let's see, right? Yeah, and and he starts a charity for all the all the people, uh, the, the Dickie Dollar Scholars who died, and, you know, all of the money from, you know, and he describes all these things that frats do. The money will go to charity. And, and what charity? Just charity. I, I, I don't know. All of them? Uh, look, I'm not a big fan of gotcha question, okay? My friends are all dead. Next question. Oh, I love Chad Redwell. Um, let's see. Yeah, and and we see the the Kathy Munch makes new new feminism, which is based on the idea that women are better than men. Which, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm gonna touch that one either. I don't feel qualified to. I'm not saying there's no possible criticisms of female feminists. I just don't think I'm the right person to be making them. And we see the the memorial, which you know, <laughs> Chad wrote the inscription. Super sorry you're dead. Didn't really know you. Some of you were hot. I always wanted to have sex with a deaf girl. And <laughs> and and Grace and Zayday, you know, walk off. They're gonna do so. I, I forget the details, but it's something that like super PC, you know. It's it's another joke about you know progressivism. I don't really feel qualified to to dissect the joke. Let's see, I mean, you know. As a progressive, I do believe in equality. They've made a lot of jokes at the expense of conservatives, so it's only fair that they do some jokes, uh, you know. And and they're not like they're not as bad as when you hear some conservatives try to make jokes about progressives, and it's just like what that doesn't even make sense. And yeah, <clears throat> hmm. Munch says, you know. I know it's you, Hester, you know, and the, you know, he yeah, Hester makes her case for why it was good, Munch says, but, we, you know, it should have been done through the courts, and and both of them threaten the other, and and Hester and finishes off with, or we could just leave each other alone and cover for each other. Okay. <laughs> I love Jamie Lee Curtis. And and apparently Grace had like a call center created for the you know in case someone has a baby doesn't know what to do. I'm I want to give you a present. Are you giving me a car? What? No! Don't be insane! I'm giving you my trust. That's okay too. <laughs> Let's see. And apparently Munch insists that Wes call her Dean Munch, not just Kathy, in bed. And we go to court. And number three, like, you know, until now she's had earmuffs that look like Leia buns. Now she just straight up has Leia buns, which, like, yeah, I mean, as a, as a convict, you know, uh, uh, you know, 
I guess they're not. Yeah. Anyway, it, lock up. Whatever. You know, you don't have a lot of personal. You know, so she has to make the Leia buns with with her hair and so Just yeah. And <laughs> you know the the before Chanel hears the verdict, one of the you know the the jury four person you know so we of the jury have unanimously decided and you know we see the paper it says not guilty and then Chanel <laughs> ever the self-destructive moron goes off on a rant about how she's so much better than the people of the jury so you know she crosses out not guilty makes a cross in at guilty we find them guilty of all 47 counts. <laughs> and Chanel is like, Your Honor, I object. You can't object. The case is over. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't worry. You're not going to prison. You're going to an asylum. You are crazy. Without knowing anything about the law, you, you know, decided you were gonna be your own counsel. Uh, you know, you slept through most of the proceedings. That's crazy. You know, and she's like, okay, one more time. My father is super gross rich. You know, and then we hear that. Oh yeah, yeah. um, your parents disowned you like three weeks ago. And they're actually suing you for the time you rode the, you know, it was a super long driveway. And, yeah, they play the Breakfast Club end song, you know, Don't You Forget About Me, which, ironically, I've forgotten almost everything about that movie. Which is like, you know, in, in that one, there's like, it's almost like a celebration kind of thing. And here, it's like they're being hauled off to the asylum. But, you know, and we learn that, oh, they, they love it at the asylum. You know, they <laughs> final you know, number five is on pills. That means she's finally tolerable. And now they're best friends. You know, she and Chanel number one are best friends. And, you know, number three completely embraced her, her lesbian side. And, you know, she's ready to show the, the, um, you know, the ears to the, uh, I forget. Yeah, the, um, nurse, I guess it is. And <laughs> she's president of the asylum. <laughs> and, you know, she talks about, oh, their best thing about this place no boys to stay skinny for so they're finally eating you know and they're just like oh it's so so good to finally eat you know and you know just as i was thinking you know there hasn't been a lot of really gnarly scary stuff in this episode you know we end, you know we get the sinister music and camera angle and lighting chanel number one goes to bed and the red devil is standing and raises the knife and you know and yeah, a number of slashers do end with the 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 killing of the the person or apparent killing at least. Yeah, uh, amazing season finale. Um, I mean, are there any? Qu I, I don't think I have any questions left. I know why the various people were killed. Most of who killed who. Let's see. Yeah, and why a couple of people were spared. You know, Hester legitimately did not want, uh, you know, Grace and, and Zayde dead because they're nice. Um, yeah, like, it's, you know, I've seen slashers where the killer does get away at the end. So that's a, a cool... I think that is everything that I had... I think... Oh, right, right. It was really funny when Boone is like, you know, I don't understand why I don't just stab. 
because this is more dramatic. Well, stabbing can be pretty dramatic. Okay, it's more poetic, okay? We're attacking their vanity. Wait, we're spraying their furniture? Uh, well, that's, that's a... That's that boon stupidity that we've come to know and love. <laughs> I mean, it was a pretty clear hint. The first time we see him, he says that Michael Bay is the best director. So, yeah, that, that, yeah. Um, let's see. I mean, I feel like it's fine if you, like, enjoy some of his work. I don't, but it's fine if you do. Just, you know, admit that it's stupid. Um, I think... Right, I appreciate the detail that, like, Munch is legitimately happy to cover up this whole thing. She just wants... She just doesn't want people killed on her campus. You know, she doesn't want the bad publicity, which, again just like such a spot-on joke like there's you know when you know when I think of that sort of thing I it's more like sexual assault and rape a lot of that has happened on college campuses and the the I don't know if it's always the Dean but like yeah the, you know, anyway people have covered that up instead of dealing with it instead of you know, trying to prevent it from happening again, because they were more concerned with the the um, the name of the you know they they didn't want the name sullied. Um, I think that might right. I really like Hester explaining why she could stab herself in the eye and not you know end up dead. Which yeah, like. You know, at the end of the previous episode, I legit thought, oh, she's dead, number five is the killer, you know. <laughs> Nickelback did so swipe right, they're in town playing some kids' bat mitzvah. I mean, at that age, you don't have a good taste in music yet, you know. And I, I just, it is kind of funny to me, the idea that they're they would have like their fame has has plummeted so much that that's what they're now doing um, I think um, right I thought it was funny when Denise forgot you know, she, she knew the first right, but she forgot the, the rights after that. And I suppose that might be everything that I had to say. Um... I like that even in the, you know, both when they're like, uh, let's see, when they're in, um, when they're in court at least once and when they're in the asylum to some extent, the Chanel's are still, you know, making sure they have some personalized appearance, you know, the, the, um, some some colorful you know they're they're wearing in in the asylum they are wearing the um ah, what are those called again yeah you you know hospital gown but they are also like uh number five has like a a blue t t teal kind of um j jacket but you know yeah and uh, no, number one has like purple pink sleeves and number three as always has the the earmuffs and they're they're like pink ish at least yeah um, let's see I 
think that might be absolutely everything. So, so yeah. Um, next week will be season one of episode two, and I th yeah. If I if I think of anything else, I'll probably just write it down, put it in the the next video. But yeah. Really, really love this entire season. Just so good. I'm so glad that I gave this. Show. Like, I've been kind of, you know, circling this this show for a while, especially once I saw that it was on Disney Plus. So wouldn't be paying any extra to be watching it. And you know, yeah. Um, always loved the cast. You know, and. Yeah, that is that is everything. So keep screaming, queens. <laughs>